Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How y'all doing? My name is John Belkowitz. I'm the CTO here at Intelligent Concrete. We're going to have a fun uh, concrete education this morning for you. We're going to focus on concrete accelerators. Um, we've had a little bit of a late winter out here on the East Coast, and folks, God bless them, they're still placing concrete, and we've been charged, we've been asked to identify the differences between the different types of uh, concrete accelerators out there to go into and get into the purpose. So today is the 22nd of February. Um, let's get into the show. First thing is, uh, why do we care about this? Um, the, oh, excuse me. Um, we we want to get into this because there's a reason why you're investing in time into this discussion, and we want to make sure that you're getting your money's worth. Uh, there's there's a definite benefit for you to understand the differences between the the basic type of accelerators and then apply those. So so then we're going to get into what the basic types are, and I'm I'm really dumbing it down not only for rudimentary illustration purposes, but for the sake of time. But you can imagine with a host of different um, providers out there, admixture providers, distributors, manufacturers, there's you know, an infinite amount of combinations, everything in between, and new types coming out every so often. And then where do we go from here? And this is, you know, the, um, the call to action. So I'm excited to get into this. Um, without any further adieu, which is French for adieu, um, why do we care? It's important to understand the difference, um, especially if you are... are are maturing from that novice to the the your or through the apprenticeship to the technician, you know, journeyman and then expert or master than expert. Um, you know, you've honed your finishing skills and you're doing more job sites that either people don't show up on the job when they were supposed to, or the ambient conditions change. Um, or, you know, the owner asks you to uh, speed up the timeline. Um, you know, there are, are two different chemicals here which are designed to do two totally different things. And that's what we want to do is understand the difference between the two basic type of accelerators, the set, the concrete set accelerator and the concrete strength accelerator. And when somebody asks you this because... The reality is in our industry, our contractors, bless you, have become um, more, you know, chemistry teachers than folks who call into dispatch and ask for a concrete mix. You know, I've heard many times when there's a contractor who calls in and says, hey, can I get 1% calcium chloride, a little bit of high range? It's almost like they're the chemical providers when they call up. They know the chemistry better than some of the dispatchers. So what we're all ultimately talking about here is getting the job done versus paying for someone to rip and replace your concrete if you, you make the wrong decision. Uh, and it can be easy as uh, a dispatcher asking you, hey, do you want set accelerator or strength accelerator? And you might ask for the wrong one inadvertently. So when we go to our, our references, you got a link below, uh, ACI or the American Concrete Institute has a free um, concrete terminology document. I believe the most latest is CT18. Might be wrong on that, but in CT18, which is free uh, with, um, I don't know if it's with membership, but I, I, I believe it was free online. Um, they've got five definitions here for uh, an accelerating admixture. An admixture that causes an increase in the rate of hydration of the hydraulic cement, thus shortens the set time, increases the rate of strength, or both. Um, and I, I really like the way they, they set up the definition here. ACI does a great job of, of communicating from the the academic from the chemistry side to or the chemistry side from the chemistry side i guess mm -hmm. to the practical side and this definition is um they don't do it all the time um but most of the time they do and this is definitely a an example of where they're creating something that that speaks to the community um because it gives you those choices and the infinite of possibilities in between 
And then it goes into a shortened definition, which I really like, an increase in rate of the natural progress of setting or hardening of concrete. Um, and then, of course, you have your, your different, you know, calcium chloride, accelerator, set accelerator. Um, what we did is we took that, that ACI set of definitions and we expanded on, you know, a set accelerator. Um, what are we talking about here? We, we are increasing the natural progress of concrete setting. When we're talking about concrete setting, we're talking about something very flipping specific. It's ASTMC 403, time of setting of concrete mixtures by penetration resistance. And initial concrete setting is measured to be 500 PSI penetration strength. Oops, I forgot to put the units there. Final set is considered to be uh, 4,000 PSI penetration strength. And why that's important um, is for finishing operations, especially if we're in cold weather or, or um, you know, the, the crews have changed or we, we need to increase the rate of setting time for us to get on top of the slab earlier, not necessarily change the strength development, we're going to use a set accelerator. And either it's going to keep our time um, consistent when the weather drops and the concrete gets colder, um, or it's going to speed up the process for us. Um, the, the other side of that coin is the strength accelerator, which increases the natural progress of concrete strength development. And we normally test this through ATSTM C39 uh, with concrete cylinders anywhere from four hours to seven days. Some folks would argue, especially if we're using uh, supplementary cementitious materials, which normally have 56 and 90 day turnaround, that we can accelerate the normal progress of that SCM concrete by accelerating that eight or that strength that would normally happen at 56 or 90 days to 28 days. All right, so um, when we look at these different chemicals, the set accelerators versus the strength accelerators, we focus on the, um, the, the hydration process and one of the easiest ways for us to do that is measure temperature over time, specifically uh, in Fahrenheit over a 24-hour period. And what we have here is that temperature in the y-axis, time in the x-axis, and we have our reference concrete. You can imagine that concrete to be 750 pounds with a 0.42 water cement ratio, 4 ounces per hundredweight on the high-range water reducer, 1750 on the rock, a rounded rock, and 1250 on a clean sand. I mean, if we're going to imagine this, let's call it the Wichita sand. You know, some beautiful rounded rock so it's easy to finish. And, you know, we're doing this for a, a high end residential driveway where we need, you know, 4,500 PSI in 24 hour in the dead of winter. So, what we wanted to do is identify if we're using the right chemical because again we need to accelerate our strength in 24 hours. Um, the reference concrete is here so this is without any chemicals and when we use a set accelerator what that is going to do is kick off the thermokinetics of cement hydration so we can you know get those cross-linking of developed phases to create a hydrated cement matrix that's going to give us that um, penetration resistance from 500 to 4,000 PSI, depending on where you want that window to be progressed. So when we look at the, the, um, the temperature of hydration curve, and this is an adiabatic or semi-adiabatic environment, we're going to see this pushing forward from what our standard curve is. We're not necessarily going to see a driving up of the maximum temperature or a widening of the curve or an ultimate increase in the area of the curve. And, and what that normally goes to is a strength development. What we're doing here is we're seeing just a shifting of the curve forward. 
right? And this, again, we're, we're, we're making it very rudimentary here. And we're talking about just accept, a set accelerator. I, I've got folks who are going to argue with me that, well, that's not true necessarily, John, because you could, with some of these products that are out there, have a combination. They would not be wrong. But when we're talking about just a set accelerator, whatever that chemistry is, is only going to have an impact. And I say that because there are a host of chemistries that can um, create this phenomenon, um, but it will not have an impact of increasing the area under that curve, which goes back to a higher degree of cementitious reaction. That's something that the strength accelerator, which could have an effect on set time, but it is not designed to have an impact on that dormancy period. So here I drew it so the ultimate temperature is increasing. That may not be necessarily true. What ha is happening is the area under that curve is increasing. The total heat output, the total temperature output is increasing because we're increasing those uh, acceleration, deceleration phases of cementitious hydration that normally, you know, yeah, they could have an impact on our dormancy and when we finish our concrete, but more so they're designed to have an impact on those later stages of cement hydration so we can increase strength. Ignore the dormancy window, and right after that, like a bat out of hell, we start increasing the temperature and we start seeing those increases in strength anywhere from 4 hours, 24 hours, and 28 days, assuming that we're using that SEM, which normally sees that 56 to 90 day strength development. So when we compare both of those two, again, the set accelerator may not or will not necessarily increase the area under the curve, which goes back to a strength development. That's something that we see with the strength accelerator. And with the strength accelerator, we don't necessarily see a change in that dormancy window, that early age uh, where we have our finishing, our placing of our concrete. Um, we see that increase in the overall curve, the area underneath that, that goes back to that strength development. Okay, so when we compare the two, uh, a set accelerator is designed to have an impact on the finishing time, commonly used in cold weather environments or any time when we need to accelerate our setting, and it's tested in our laboratory through ASTMC 403, uh, which is that, that tabletop penetration strength. Um, this technology may not have a positive impact on strength, and in some cases, if you use too much of this, it could have a, ne a negative impact on early and later strength development. Uh, and, and on the other side of that coin, the strength accelerator designed to have a minimal impact on finishing time, and it's specifically used for accelerating the concrete timeline, developing that strength ahead of time so we can progress with the next steps. And we normally test it with ASTMC 39, which is our concrete cylinders, and then we verify that with ASTMC, I think that's 1074, not 1078, concrete maturity. Um, we often see a, a positive impact on strength, ultimately what that's designed for. And in some cases, when we see a, a rapid increase in early strength, we can oftentimes see a reduction in strength or in, in later strength. Now, please bear in mind there are a lot of technologies that fall in the gray area somewhere in the middle of these two, and, and that's all right. Um, what the ultimate objective of, of this presentation was to get you excited. We need you to start, if you've never done this before, it's either purchasing some accelerators, and you can get them from Home Depot, um, and you can run these mixes in your backyard, in your shops, or working with your ReadyMix provider if you're starting to scale up as a contractor. And the sales folks should help you understand, give you some great information um, and direction for those small scale-up studies. Um, because, I mean, good concrete practices dictate that we always want to 
you know, try things out in a smaller version, slowly dial them in, scale them up before we put them in a commerce-based, contract-based, concrete job site. Um, you know, get your feet wet before you dive in. Now, if you have any more questions, any more concrete concerns, we've got a lot of great information out there that gets into why, how, and how we use these um, concrete chemicals, um, these accelerators, whether or not we're using a quick patch or we're, we're looking at winter pours. Um, so, you know, please head over to our, our YouTube, LinkedIn, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook accounts to check out these different vlogs and shoot us any concrete questions. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ding that bell for notifications. Go concrete! Peter's Halt!